Okay, so we're gonna do a before and after taste. Cheers. Cheers, what do you mean a before and after taste? There's no alcohol in this yet. Oh, okay. Mmm, I would love to eat this with shrimp. And I haven't even smoked any marijuana today. I haven't either. You're watching The Dinner Bell, featuring high maintenance on munchies. <laughs> Collaborating with friends is one of like the biggest perks of my job. And in this instance, Ben and Katja, two fairly recent but very like quick close friends who have this amazing web series called High Maintenance, wanted to throw a party before the end of the year to celebrate their cast, crew, all the people that have had some role in their show. The premise of High Maintenance is Ben plays a weed delivery man. What I love about it is like little slices of lives where he's the one thread. It's some of the best character writing and Katja's casting is like mind blowing. Okay, so it's $50? Yeah. All right, so babe, money. No, I didn't take out any cash today. I have $63 in my account. I'm waiting on a paycheck. Are you serious right now? I don't even smoke. I'm not paying for this. We got this weed because we told Erica, you told Erica. They direct it, her. write it, edit it, star in it. That's a real labor of love. They're just constantly utilizing their whole friend group for their show. Hey, Julie. Hey, Did you see that Kurt Loder is here? <laughs> That's why I picked it. You guys are nearing the finish line. We are editing the the last three episodes of this six episode batch that is going to be releasing very soon. Do you ever get fucked up and then do an edit and see it the next day and be like, what the hell? No, I edit pretty stoned and it helps. Yeah, it doesn't get done as fast. I'll be like, I've got to work on this and then I'll get really distracted by something. But then something happens and that distraction, that's quite nice. But the people who we are working with are now our friends and our family. It's a lot of the same people that we've been working with for the entirety of the show. Now it's kind of folding in on itself like any kind of dough. A lot of people that we're inviting to this are people who we've known, met through high maintenance. Yeah. During our consultation, we decided to meld the two food styles of Katja's Danish heritage and Ben's Jewish heritage. The time that we chose was brunch, bagels, salmon, Bloody Marys, and then like a lots of other delicious things. You, you, Sunday, one o'clock, lots of people. Look for the balloon tied to the gate. Wow, I had that like one cup of coffee and I'm like, yeah. I know. I'm flying. I'm back in Long Island and we're gonna start with the main star of the event, which is the bagel. Of course, it's just as easy to go out and order a couple dozen on a nice Sunday morning, but what I have realized is that as soon as someone bites into it and you say, those are homemade, you just really blow their minds. So that's the main agenda today. It's not that hard. Don't be scared. We're in it together. Okay, so two cups of lukewarm water into the mixer. Teaspoon of yeast. We've got the dough hook in here, which is that like piggy, piggy tail, piggy penis one. Start to stir it up. Two tablespoons of sugar and a tablespoon and a half of salt. Two tablespoons of buckwheat honey. Smells a little like horse pea, but don't be scared, it's real good. I'm gonna slowly add our five cups of bread flour. So you just mix, mix, mix for about five minutes. So it starts to sort of like make what looks like Russian dolls, and then it'll all kind of blob back. Dough's all ready. It's the perfect consistency now. You can see soft and smooth and not terribly sticky. So we're gonna take that out. It's all one clean swoop, and then right down into a lightly oiled bowl. And then on top, this is a step you do not want to skip. This is the cellophane. You know how bread recipes always say top with a lightly oiled cellophane? Well, if you don't do that, what will happen is the top will get really crusty and it's gonna ruin your day. There you go. And then we're gonna put this in a warm spot for two hours. We've got our bagels proofing now, so we're gonna take care of the grab locks. So we've got the two large beets 
that I peeled and threw in the food processor. It makes this really nice, like, fine confetti. And then I've got two tablespoons of fennel seed that I toasted, one cup of salt, and then one cup of sugar. Sooner than you could imagine, this is gonna get kind of liquidy because all the salt's gonna interact with that beet and just make a nice wet sand. And then we're gonna add, I just did like a small handful of dill. So we have this wild Alaskan coho salmon. It's really, really beautiful. First step is we have a quarter cup of vodka. So we're gonna pour the quarter cup of vodka over the fish. We've scored this lightly. We're gonna start laying out a thin layer of the cure. Not the band, the mixture. So I've laid out two large pieces of cellophane and I did two and a half spoonfuls down of the cure. This goes down here like so. We're just gonna kind of apply it. Okie doke. Now I'm gonna grab a baking sheet to put this on. The cellophane is gonna act as like a barrier and we're just gonna like loosely wrap this. And then to push the moisture out even faster, we're gonna put this board on top as a weight and then into the fridge. The salmon can cure in the fridge up to three days. It's good after 24 hours, but you know, the longer you leave it in, the more intense that, that beet color will be. So the moment for the dough has arrived. It's been proofing. Look how big and boisterous it is. What proofing is, you put it somewhere nice and warm and all that yeast is like having a party, growing, growing, growing. There's definitely some science to it. I cannot tell you this. Click the link on Bill Nye the Science Guy. So we're gonna take the dough out and we're gonna start separating it into 12 individual little bagels. You could definitely measure them on the scale if you want. I just, I don't care about perfection, you know? I just don't. So we're gonna make bowls. Isn't this fun? It's nice and warm, fun to touch. Again, we don't want them to dry out, so we put a little damp cloth and then put them in a warm place to rise for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna fill a stock pot with a good amount of water. We're gonna add some more of that fancy honey. Two tablespoons, oops, these look great. Look how much they've proofed. What we're gonna do next is take it in our hand, poke, poke, poke through. It's starting to look like a bagel, isn't it? So you wanna widen it so that the hole's about two inches. You can make like a bracelet. That's what you're looking for. So we're gonna let them rest for 20 minutes. We've got our nice hot honey bath bubbling away. We're gonna take the bagels one at a time, kind of gently, but they can handle a lot. They're gonna need about 30 seconds per side. Okay, and after your 30 seconds is up, you can pull them. You're relying on the water that's still on the dough to get the seeds to stick. So I've got my everything blend here of caraway, fennel seed, sea salt, dehydrated onion, dehydrated garlic, poppy seed, and sesame seed. So you can go real crazy and what sticks, sticks. And then I invented this last night. I'm sure some food, food blog bitch does it too, but I do little stripes of hoppy seed and sesame seed. So five minutes, 500, easy to remember. Our five minutes is up of cooking at 500, so we're gonna turn down to 350. Turn down for what? 350. We're gonna take them out and rotate, sort of turn them around so each one gets the same amount of toasting time. You can see they've gotten nice and golden. Mm, that smells like heaven. Now we have let them cool. We're gonna put them in the bag and pack everything up and hit the highway. That easy. It's really hard, actually. Don't make these. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh. Hate this part. You know, you work, 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 work crazy hours, and then driving into the city, anxious, and then you arrive, there's this crazy, crazy, crazy hecticness. It's the morning of the brunch, we've loaded everything in. I'm getting all the sort of last minute preppy stuff done. 
I made a trout pate, which is smoked trout, and just shallots, capers, and cream cheese. Yeah, mushroom, walnut, leek tart. We had a radicchio and roasted beet salad with bagna cotta dressing, celery root, and parsley salad. And then cardamom cookies. To get the recipes from this episode, click on the link right here. When we stored the fish back at the house, we wrapped it up loosely in the cellophane, kept it under the weight for a day and a half, and transported it in a fish box, rinsed it off in the sink, patted it dry, and then we're laying it out on our board because we're gonna make sort of a do-it-yourself topping, which takes a lot of the stress off the hostess, I'd say. We did two alcoholic beverages. We did a grapefruit and Coors Banquet. The Banquet Ballyhoo, I think I called it. And then homemade Bloody Mary, which quite frankly, I think was one of the tastier Bloody Marys I've had in a while. I'm here to be taught about how to make a Bloody Mary. Let's fucking go. I invented this recipe, so can't talk shit about it. So we are starting with two quarts of tomato juice, two tablespoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of celery seed, one teaspoon pimenton, the smoked paprika. We've got one heaping teaspoon of salt. I just use sea salt in this instance. There's actually this interesting fact about <laughs> the Romans. They used salt as the payment, That's hence salary. Salary, that's where the word salary comes yeah. from. Anyways. Hot sauce. Frank's Red Hot? Yeah, well. Is it Frank's Red Hot? You just spoiled, spoiled it, but yes, it is. It's my favorite. I really like Frank's Red Hot. We've been putting it on everything lately. Two tablespoons of Frank's. Into the pot it goes. And then Worcestershire, one and a half tablespoons. Six tablespoons of horseradish. A queef of, <laughs> of horseradish. Just a, just a queef. Just a queef. That was really tasty. And then, you know, shot it down the, the old pot leaf luge, like any old normal Sunday. Yeah, look at this ice sculpture. We got it made for you. <gasps> That's amazing. Well, thanks. I used to get these all the time in college, but they were much jankier. The crowning achievement today was the first time we shot that crazy vodka down that chute, and it came flying out before we knew it. Oh, that's the shoot. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, God. The major guest quotient today was cast members, producers, slash friends, people that I would be like, I know that guy, and it's like, oh yeah, dipshits from their show. So it was a room full of friends that have helped them get there. Thank you guys for coming. You are representative of our support system that has gotten us through this last cycle of high maintenance and be let's be honest, our lives. Thanks for coming today. I hope you enjoy the brunch. This is just our little way of saying we love you guys, appreciate you guys, and are wishing you a wonderful 2015. Thanks for being in our lives, guys. Grab a plate and a Bloody Mary and let's get our brunch on. Yeah. Love you too. It was, it was a fun one. When you strike a chord with someone, it, it really does resonate and it feels meaningful and, and worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's and really enjoying themselves. The shandies are being the shandies were hit. drank. They are drunk. I'm really full. Thank you it's for a, letting us do this. This has been a, amazing. More than one person has come up to me saying, this is pretty awesome. Were they like, Why'd you already get married? That girl seems like super attainable. Seems like she's begging for it. A lot of people have said that. I... <laughs> My dogs are barking. I'd like to go home and I'm tired. I wish there was like a foot fetishist that would rub my feet. <laughs> when I was little, every Sunday, we would get bagels. One day, I reached my little claw into the bag and chose the last of the only kind of bagel I wanted to eat. I go to rip it apart, and it was like this. And it was, there was some kind of resistance, and it was like a whole wiglet full of hair, like human hair. 
and I was horrified. That's my bagel nightmare.